So let me talk a little bit about an argument that pro-lifers typically call the responsibility objection. Mm -hmm. This is one of the kind of important first responses to bodily rights arguments, particularly a bodily rights category that Trent Horn and us all kind of like, we like this labeling the right to refuse argument. So it's not responding to the idea that women can do whatever they want with anything inside of their body, the super kind of extremist pro-choice argument. It's responding to the better pro-choice argument that says, no, 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 you don't have the right to do whatever you want with your body. It's crazy. No, of course not. (laughs) No, but you do have the right to do some things. And one of those things is you have the right to refuse to have your body hooked up as a life support machine Mm -hmm. for someone else, even another person. So this is where Judith Jarvis Thompson's famous violinist analogy comes in, where you wake up in a hospital bed, you've been kidnapped, and you've got to stay there hooked up to this violinist for nine months, or else the violinist is going to die. One of the important first responses, not the only response, but a good (laughs) Mm -hmm. initial response to the, or one of the initial responses to this is what pro-lifers call the responsibility objection. It is pointing out one of several important differences between Thompson's violinist story and the real world and what (laughs) pregnancy is actually like, where you say, okay, in the violinist story, you were kidnapped Mm -hmm. by the society of music lovers who want to help the violinist. And they've, and they've sent, they've taken you to this hospital and dropped you off basically. And that's, not usually how pregnancy begins. Okay? Right. <laughs> so thankfully, yeah. that's not usually what goes down. So the responsibility objection says basically that when you have consensual sex, you're engaging in an act that you know might result in the creation of an inherently needy child. And therefore, you owe that child compensation. In other words, you are culpable. The fact that Sex creates babies sometimes, and you knew that when you Mm -hmm. had sex means that you are morally responsible for the fact that suddenly now there is this extremely vulnerable child that you basically have to care for for it not to die. And it says that you need to care for the child at least until you can transfer care to someone else. So one day, if we can Star Trek beam the baby out or we can move it to an artificial womb Maybe that's just perfectly fine. But Mm -hmm. for like right now in 2020, the situation is you've got to stay pregnant for at least about 23 weeks before the baby is viable. And so that's the basic thing that pro-lifers have talked about. Now, Mm -hmm. I want you to connect this to the consent to sex is not consent to pregnancy idea and talk a little bit about what's in the video, again, Mm -hmm. for the people that haven't watched the video, but then take us deeper. Okay, that sounds good. 